black people. The DA says they reject the ANC's narrow-based triple BEE and will offer their own alternative model of what they call real broad-based empowerment. The party also indicated an alternative strategy to land reform by claiming to return the land through massive land redistribution in South Africa. For more on this, sir, we are joined now by DA MP Gwen Nguyen, who is also the party's head of policy. Gwen, good evening to you good and evening. thank you for joining us. Uh, firstly, what is the DA's stance on on, uh, you know, triple BEE, -E. there seems to be confusion, there seems to be differing views from senior party members. If they don't know, how should we? Well, what is clear, Bongan, is that we actually have moved away from BE as implemented uh, by the ANC. Because so you've we've ditched seen triple BEE? -E. Yes. And for that, and that reason why we've done that is because we've seen that it tends to really rather tend to narrow enrichment of a few, and we really want to develop a policy that's going to benefit the majority of South Africans. The reason we're all confused is that even today, Salim Maklazi was saying that the party hasn't ditched triple BEE, it's still going to be considered. So what exactly is it? I think sometimes where there's confusion is just really a matter of semantics. So once you have developed this new improved empowerment policy, do you still call it BEE? Or if you've changed it so fundamentally, should you actually be calling it something else? But the realization that the current implementation of BE has failed is one everyone in the party shares. And I think sometimes what leads to this confusion is the semantic debate about is a new improved policy BE 3.0 or can you rightfully call it a different name if you actually have a radical shift? You've and I think we should call it something different. You've also said you don't want a policy that's necessarily race-based. You want a policy that includes all poor people. Yes, yeah, so we want to increasingly move to um, a non-racial basis. I think this is based on a principled level, but also actually what the empirical data is telling us. So a World Bank report recently published on overcoming poverty and inequality in South Africa showed that race is becoming a declining factor in terms of determining inequality. And other socioeconomic characteristics, such as education and skills, are actually far more important in determining, um, are becoming far more important in determining um, inequality. But and just quickly, I'd say a system like social grants, for example, works on disadvantage and yet no doubt nobody would deny that social grant beneficiaries are predominantly black. But even at a conceptual level, triple BEE -E is about redressing the imbalances of the past. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, black people aren't victims of some accident, uh, some cosmic accident. Their yeah. misfortune was located on a system of disadvantage precisely against black people. Yeah. Why are you ditching that? Well, we're not ditching um, that. I mean, you, you've well, just, what, you, -E what you've seeks outlined. seeks to redress the imbalances of the past, which were targeting black people. Why are you uncomfortable with a policy that seeks to advantage black people? No, we're not. In fact, what I'm telling you is that a policy based on disadvantage will have predominantly black beneficiaries. So this right, absolutely but, but is, can is let me finish, among, this is absolutely a policy about empowering black South Africans. It's rather a choice between alternatives. So what we mustn't get into is this hegemonic idea that there's only one way or an NC way of doing things. BE is but one way of empowerment and there's a plethora of options out there and we're just saying it's about time we explore them. Of course one could explore all kinds of options but mm. conceptually what I'm asking you is that triple BEE -E seeks to deal with the disadvantage that systems like colonialism and apartheid bestowed specifically on black people. Uh, yes. Those weren't a catch-all disadvantage for anyone. They were targeted at black people. Why are you ditching that? That's what I'm asking. Well, I guess I, I think you're drawing a false dichotomy there because we are absolutely committed to redress. We're just saying this way will actually redress that very same historical injustice you're talking about better. The ANC says they're not surprised by this. They're calling mm. this a flip-flop and they're saying you're still ultimately a party that defends privilege. Well, that's categorically not true. I don't know how a policy based on disadvantage defends privilege. So what they'd have to defend their own statements. What about the land question? What mm -hmm. are you proposing there? Well, essentially, I mean, the land question, as you'll well know, is quite complex. But the essential offer is that South Africans must own their own land. There mustn't be some kind of state ownership and to leave South Africans as perpetual tenants of the state. So it's essentially one based on um, you know, ownership and making sure that people have registrable rights to land and rolling out title deeds as much as possible. So at least on the expropriation issue, you're, you're for it. You're just uh, maybe differing with how it needs to be done. Is that what you're saying? No, where there's expropriation, there should definitely be compensation. So we're not for expropriation without compensation. That's quite clear. All right, we'll leave it there with uh, DA uh, Head of Policy, Gwen Nguyen, joining us in the studio. Back to Francis.
Thanks, Bangani. Uh, this was one of the stocks lower on the market today. Nedbank, albeit report.